Hey guys, it's Wednesday, September 30th, 2020, and it's been a hell of a year. I think we can all agree. Um, and it's been a while since I last did a post. And so I'm here in one of my Zen spots, my garden. And I think the last time I did a video, I mentioned that um, I was in my greenhouse and that's a whole nother situation because there were some things in my first time in doing a greenhouse and really doing a bigger gardening experiment than I've done before. Um, or there, those variables that I talked about, the sun and um, the moisture and all of those things, of course, they affected the plants. Um, but the thing that I think affected it the most was the soil. So in contrast to that, I'm here in my outside garden. And this is um, when we first dug up this area, it was mostly uh, really hard, compacted, black, um, almost black dirt. Um, super, super rich looking, but um, it was hard. So first we had to till it and we had a machine, um, a handheld machine that a very nice neighbor let us borrow because the one that we got um, would not go through it. It, was, it wasn't it was tough enough. Um, it was super, super hard. You could barely even get a shovel through this. So first we had to till all of this um, it started out with just a small little patch of land that I was going to do, like a couple collard greens. Um, and then it turned into this. So we ended up digging up this whole space that you see fenced off. And I will tell you what we've done with it so far. So over here... This started out, okay, this is the first patch. Let me just say this. This is supposed to be a walkway, but the, a lot of the plants have overtaken it. Um, first, I'll start with the fence. This is a deer fence, I think they call it. And we just got that from the local home improvement store. And I'm moving a lot because there's mosquitoes are out. <laughs> but anyways, okay, so the deer fence, we put that up. That took like a couple of hours probably and I don't think I did much of anything of that but I did help and I did see the process you just put these little stakes in the ground and then you which are backwards that we learned after that but it still works and then this one is four feet five feet high and um it goes around the whole thing and I think these little holes it's just meant to keep out the animals, so deer primarily, rabbits. Um, it does not keep out moles and other ground in, um, things that go through the ground animals. But we did do this. And first we started with corn back in this corner. And the corn, so I'll start back there. The corn was huge. It grew nice and big. And then something started eating the, the corn. And so then we figured that's when we decided to fence it off. And then I put more corn in here and we had rows and rows of this great corn that grew big. And then the squirrels attacked my corn and they literally feasted on it. As soon as it got about this big, then they just came through and they started just eating all of the corn. Um, I think I got one ear of corn out of, of all this corn. Um, so this is what's left of it. We've dug out most of it and then um, I'm about to put some new veggies in there. This is the squash. This grew like a weed, like crazy. And then um, something started eating the squash. And I've done multiple things to try to combat if you're you're interested. It, I used um, blood pellets bl or blood meal, blood meal. And it's literally just meal of blood from different animals and it's dried and you sprinkle it. And it also has nitrogen in it, which is good for the plants. It's good for the soil. 
So there's lots of it in here. It kept the animals away for a little bit of time and then they came back, so. <laughs> Um, but then, you know, I've had squash, that's a squash blossom, but again, not much from that. Over here, I had some bush beans and you can see these, they're still growing and these are super, super yummy, really crisp and tender when you get it fresh picked. And I had rows of this the whole way of this trellis that you see, but, um, Something ate that when it was very young because I grew everything from seeds. And these are the plants that are left. These are the flowers that are on them. These really pretty pea flowers. Peas are also very high in nitrogen from what I understand. And that's also very good for corn. So one of the things i forget the name of it but um i will put some links to some gardening tips that i've been looking at and websites that i've been looking into to help me with this gardening journey but what i've learned is that if you do crops one year on the soil and then you switch with another crop that empties into the soil different types of nutrients then they benefit e each other and then you can also do crops underneath the crops that are growing currently and that's what I tried to do over here <laughs> but that was um I'll tell you what happened so what you see most of is sweet potato leaves the sweet potatoes have overtaken all of this I started with growing sweet potatoes in between the collards that I had that um, don't grow in the summer. So I just let those die out over the summer. And then I planted these in between those. Also in between, um, I, I planted white potatoes, tomatoes, and the squash and in the back. I've got some banana peppers. Let me see. The squash took over everything, so it's hard to tell what it is. Here's a uh, banana pepper. And these are some tomatoes. I have heirloom tomatoes, big beefsteak tomatoes. Here's some tomatoes over here. They're still growing. I had a I started them in the greenhouse. They weren't doing well. They weren't producing any tomatoes in the greenhouse. I put them out here in this dirt and they started growing like crazy. So now we're still getting tomatoes in the end of September. I had here bok choy and it was really, really good. I was very surprised. Again, I grew everything from seed and I was very surprised that the bok choy actually grew as well as it did. This is a very soggy area of the, the garden because it collects a lot of water when it rains. And apparently the bok choy liked that. So they grew really well here. These are all tomatoes. I just planted them. I just planted a few and they just started spreading. They grow up and if they don't have a way to grow up, they grow out and, and grow roots into the ground and then grow up from there. And I'll show you more of that over there. But then in between here, I grew heat wave lettuce. So I had, and I really need to weed. And that's another thing about gardens. Um, <laughs> if you've never had one before, it's very imperative that you actually, uh, you know, go through, look at all of this here, lots of weeds. Um, so it's mostly grass. It's mostly grass that grows, overgrows. And so you have to clear it out so that the roots have a place to spread out to from the plants that you want to grow. Um, and not these weeds, which grow better than anything else, ironically. Um, but I did have 
some lettuce as you can see i just kept getting it from the bottom and then it grows up uh, and that's another thing that I, I need to research further is how what's the best way to harvest vegetables because i experimented with a couple of different ways sometimes i just chopped off the whole for for the bok choy i chopped off the whole base of it and then of course it doesn't have any leaves to deliver nutrients to the rest of the plant so that changed the way i did this so i started going from the bottom and sometimes when it gets uh too old it um gets bitter for the lettuce so that's another thing that i figured out so this type of lettuce i'm gonna pick it as soon as it gets to be a decent size next time um and then the trellises you know we were just putting down what we what we had kind of so we had these stakes with this kind of thin um twine or you can use rope or whatever you have here's a little tomato that didn't make it these are my heirloom tomatoes these are super 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 good and these are the tomatoes that just kind of grew over. They weren't really, oh, there's a tomato. I didn't even see it. Oh no, it's getting brown. So you gotta check your garden. I just put that back in the soil so it grows. And I, I have a compost pile that's further up the garden. I just throw all my scraps from um, the kitchen in there. So it's another way to use what you already have. And this, if you see this little baby, that is eggplant. And this is actually the biggest surprise out of my whole garden. Eggplants, if you've ever, of course, seen an eggplant, you know how tiny the little seeds are inside the plant that you eat, the part that you eat. And those are the seeds, of course, that you use to grow the plants. And they were tiny. I was not expecting anything out of them because when they started, they look like maybe this small, if you can see that. Very tiny leaves like this. And that's when I planted them in the soil. And now they have these big, thick, which that one didn't make it. These big, thick roots. And um, I, uh, again, I wasn't expecting them to grow this big, so I didn't have a trellis, which I will do next year for them is get them a trellis. But they're, they're very heavy. I wasn't expecting that, but they grow a lot of really delicious. These are uh, Japanese eggplants. And so they grow long and skinny. And so this is a bigger one. About the size of my hand. And here's one. They have thorns on them. They're very spiky. And I've got this random, now it's kale season, so I have kale. That's why I'm out in my garden, so that I can clear everything out, all the weeds, start fresh, get my fall garden going, which is my objective for today. We'll see how that goes. But this, was something that I had over there from the leftover from the summer and I just let it stay in here and it's the only kale it's lacinato kale that's actually growing but it just came back so that's my plant garden it's so I mean it's it's not as easy as it looks but it's super fun just to see how you can grow something that wasn't there before, something that you can eat. Um, and it's pretty. Here's a purple sweet potato flower. I love those. So that's it, There's, then the butterflies. That's another thing that I wanna focus on for next year, propagation of plants that attract um, pollinators. So bees, butterflies, those are the things that also help your garden grow. And I've got a butterfly bush right there. And so it, it, when it's in full bloom and it's got these beautiful purple flowers, it attracts a lot of butterflies. 
And then those butterflies come through here. And there's one right there. That's my garden, guys. That's it for today. Talk to you later. Bye.